So in this video, we're going to do the same problems we did for the trial and error, but we're going to use the AC method. I do think that there are certain times one of these techniques is easier than the other, but if you struggle with factoring, the AC method may be your better choice. It's still doing a trial and error, it's just organizing the problem differently. We are figuring out using a chart on how to split that middle term to go backwards the foil. You're basically figuring out that middle term, how to split it up. You can't just split it up however you want. It has to work. So we're going to use the chart to do this. Please still use trial and error if the leading coefficient is a 1. If you see the first and the last terms are perfect squares, still strongly suggest trial and error. Trial and error I do think is easier if one of the numbers is prime, as we did in the last videos. But it's your choice, I think, once you see the leading coefficient is not a 1. So we're going to make the chart. It is really important that you have it written in the correct form and you've done your GCF first. But we're going to take A times C, keeping our signs. And we are asking ourselves what two numbers multiply to get me this number, that when I add them, I get the number on the right. Similar to the idea we would did with trial and error with the leading coefficient of 1, but we can't go directly to the answer in this case. We actually have to break it up. When we break it up by design, it will always work to factor by grouping, and then you'll be able to finish it. So I'm going to go back to the problems. So I'm going to start with this first problem. Again, first step, GCF. There is not a GCF. Second step, check that it's in the correct order, yes. And what are my signs going to be? Again, it doesn't matter what technique you're using. You should always decide what your signs are going to be. So both of my signs are positive. So I'm now going to make my chart. The chart says take A, which is 6, times C, which is a positive 2, and put it on the left-hand side. The middle coefficient goes on the right-hand side. We want two numbers that multiply to give me 12 that when I add them up, I get 7. And a lot of you can see it right off the bat. Some of you can already see 12 would be 3 times 4. But I just want to show you, if you're not sure, start with 1 times 12. That doesn't work because that would be 13. The next number that divides into 12 would be 2. 2 times 6, that would give me 8 when I add them, so that doesn't work. The next biggest number that divides into 2 it is 3. 3 times 4 gives me 7, that works. If you can see it directly, you don't need to list them all out, but what I recommend when it starts getting a little more complicated is start with 1 times itself, then go to the next number. 2 doesn't divide into it. 3 go into it. 4 go into it. If you organize it, it's so much easier. So this tells me how to split up the 7x. So I want you to stop. 3x plus 4x is 7x. I've not changed anything here other than the way I've broken it up. We will always bring down the first and the last. This chart tells me how do I split the middle terms up. Now I have four terms, so I'm going to go back to the grouping format. Out of the first pair, I can pull out a 3x, which leaves me with 2x plus 1. Remember, there's always a placeholder. We always, always bring our sign down. Out of the second pair, I can pull out a 2. That leaves me with 2x plus 1. They have to match, and they will match if you've done this chart correctly. So we pull out the piece that matches that factor of 2x plus 1. Remember, we pull it down as one term because we're factoring it out. What's left over, the 3x plus 2, goes into my other parentheses. I do not have to foil this one out because by doing this chart, you have designed it to work. But it's always good to double check your signs and it's never going to hurt when you're finished to go ahead and multiply this back out and check. Going to number three. First thing, GCF. Second piece, it's in the correct order because I have two variables. They're on the outside. My signs will be opposite signs. So I'm going to make my chart. This is where you got to be careful. It's 3 times a negative 6. So it's a negative 18. 
and my middle term is a negative 17. I want two numbers that multiply to give me negative 18 that when I add them, I get a negative 17. And remember, my signs should be opposite. So this is where you, again, stop and think. If I want them to add together and give me a negative number, I want the bigger number to be negative. So first choice would be 1 times the negative 18. The negative 18 is the bigger number, quote unquote. So when I'm talking about 18 and 1. So when I add these together, it works. I don't have to go any further. That tells me how to split that middle term. Negative xy, sorry, positive xy, negative 18xy. This is my chart piece that pulls over. We will bring down the first and we will bring down the last. We now have four terms, so we're going to factor by grouping. Out of the first pair, I can pull out an x. That leaves me with a 3x plus y. Always bring your sign down. Out of the second pair, I can pull out a 6y. Remember, we're actually pulling out a negative 6y. So that gives me 3x plus y. These match. If they don't, you did something wrong. The 3x plus y, I factor out. What's left over, x minus 6y, goes into my other parentheses. That is my answer. Get the same answer with trial and error as I get with this factoring in this format. When we get bigger numbers, it can get messy though. So going to the last one. Start off, GCF, no. Correct order, yes. My signs for this will be opposite signs. So I'm gonna make my chart. 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12, and it's a positive 4. So I want the two numbers that multiply to give me negative 12, that when I add them up, I get 4. And remember, the signs are opposite. So I want the bigger sign to be a positive, since I'm getting a positive 4 when I add them together. So again, I'm going to start in the, the same order like I did before. Negative 1 times 12, that gives me a positive 11. That doesn't work. Negative 2 times 6, that gives me an, a positive 4. That works. I don't need to go any further. Split it up. That gives me a negative 2x plus 6y. Bring down the first. Bring down the last. We now have four terms. So we're going to factor by grouping. Again, pause it any time you need to. Pull out a 2x from the first pair. That leaves you with 2x minus 1. Remember, there's always a 1 as a placeholder. The sign always comes down from the pairs. Out of the second pair, I can pull out a 3, and that leaves me with 2y minus 1. And I noticed I made a mistake because I didn't match. So I'm going to go back up here and fix it. That's how I just caught my mistake because I did not match. It should have been a, an x above, so this should have been a 2x. They now match. Factor out the, the um, binomial that matches. What's left over goes into the other parentheses. Always check yourself by foiling it back out, but if your chart works, this problem will work by factor by grouping.